Okay, today we're going to learn how to do cluster analysis on SAS. I'm going to open up my SAS file called task10cluster.sas. You can find this on my webpage. And also I'm going to use the data set called task9data.txt. This can be also find on my webpage right here. So the first step is let's read in the data for um, doing our cluster analysis. And I'm going to run this data. Okay, it says it seems that it has been successfully run. Okay, now we're going to run our first cluster analysis, and I'm going to use what we call a hierarchical clustering, and um, that's a method called um, procedure cluster, so proc cluster. And there are some um, options that I gave. You don't need to know everything about it. Um, no eigenvalue just makes the computation a little bit easier. Uh, it doesn't take as much time, particularly if you have a large database. Uh, method centroid is a centroid method that we're going to use in order to cluster um, the uh, individual um, data points and um, R square and no norm and we're going to count that um, output as tree and we are going to use the data for task 10 which we have read in on the top okay and in this um, data set you probably notice that there's two variables wine or I'm sorry three variables wine and heart and country country is the country and wine is the wine consumption to per person and heart uh, is the the uh, mortality rate for related to heart disease okay so we want to see how wine consumption is an effect on heart disease uh, mortalities okay so first of all let's try to run proc cluster and see what happens okay it's currently running okay this is a result so yes, this is a result of the proc cluster, and it seems that it is dividing up countries and try to make a cluster of them. And it seems that um, Australia and Iceland have the um, closest systems. That's probably the reason why it has been um, linking this, these two countries first, followed by Austria and Netherlands, and all the way down to cluster two and cluster four. And it seems that cluster two is this big cluster right here and cluster four is this big cluster that you see here starting from New, New Zealand, England, all the way down to Australia. So this is what we call a dendrogram and um, you've probably heard of a dendrogram before that uh, looks like um, a clustering of different countries in this case. Okay, so that's our first um, cluster analysis and you'll probably see the results. And this is a hierarchical type of clustering. And let's try to do some interesting things with this result, okay? Now, you may remember after proc cluster, we did a output called proc, uh, output as tree. And we want to use this, and um, we're gonna um, call a procedure called proc tree. And the reason for doing this is that we want to make a scatter plot that kind of describes these um, different uh, type of clusters and try to see a um, graphical view of these uh, different countries. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is run the proc uh, tree. Let me run this. Okay, if I submit it, now you will probably see something very similar that you saw earlier from um, proc cluster. Whereas um, now you probably see that um, these four countries have been Bind, and these five countries have been buying and you probably see the same five countries and the four countries and the remaining bulk of the countries as um, three clusters okay now the reason that I did this and you probably noticed that you have to specify a number of clusters which is n cluster and I classify or I put the number as three because I want to find three clusters okay so once I did that, and you probably also noticed that I have a out um, data set that is called cluster three because it was three clusters, okay? And I have to have this out in order to use or in order to make a scatter plot on a proc SG plot. And I'm gonna use the data set plus three here. Okay, in that scatter plot, I have a Y variable, um, heart mortality um, rates and numbers, I'm sorry, and X as wine consumption per person. And I'm gonna group it by cluster, okay? And once I group that, let's see what results that I'm gonna get. Okay, I'm going to run this again. 
and now you see a cluster, uh, a scatter plot with uh, different colors. Okay, so you see the first um, cluster, uh, number one, which is uh, blue. It's kind of clustered in the middle right here with um, heart mortality number of deaths roughly around 200 and wine consumption roughly around three bottles per person, about two to three, I would say, on, on average. And on, for the second cluster, you probably notice that this is the one that is on the red, which is one on the left top corner, an average of about one to two um, wine consumption and um, heart mortality um, death roughly around 250 to 300. So that's the second cluster. And now there's the third cluster on the right bottom right here, which has high consumption of wine and very low um, heart-related mortality um, number of deaths. Okay, So you can kind of see by looking at this results, the higher that you consume wine, um, the less likely you would have um, heart-related diseases that leads to death. Okay. And it seems that you can probably um, cluster into three groups of these different type of countries. Okay. And um, it seems that uh, in order to get with which countries and go into which um, cluster, what we're going to do is now print these, um, number, these countries by wine consumption and heart. Um, in order to make a print, we can't just um, proc print and um, print the data and print it by cluster. We actually have to sort it. Um, by cluster first. So we are going to sort. So I'm going to submit. And it seems that it is running. And um, let's see that it seems that it has been all sorted correctly. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to going to proc print. So now these are the three clusters. Okay, so one was the big cluster that you kind of saw in the middle, which is this cluster right here. And it goes from Australia, Iceland, Austria, and all the way down to the United States. The second cluster was the group of people that didn't consume a lot of wine, but had had a um, high heart-related uh, uh, mortality um, number of deaths, which are uh, Finland, Ireland, England, and New Zealand. This is the red dots that you see here on the left top corner. And the third cluster is the countries that consume a lot of wine and also had a very low um, heart-related diseases that led to death. Those are these um, countries that you see on the bottom right corner. Okay, they are Italy, Switzerland, France, um, Spain, and Luxembourg. Okay, now you probably notice that there are five countries and you kind of notice that there are four in this cluster, but it seems that um, the centroid method also include this dot right here that you see that kind of seems to be more related to the first cluster, the main cluster that was kind of in the middle. But however, this um, cluster more or this uh, country belongs a little bit more to this cluster based on the centroid method that we have used. Okay, so now that's how we would do a um, hierarchical clustering. So that's the first part that we use. And kind of summing up, um, we use what we call a PROC plus. That's the procedure that we use for hierarchical clustering. Okay, And um, recently, it seems that um, hierarchical clustering is good and nice. But some of the recent trends is that uh, some people kind of like to use k-means clustering. So in order to use k-means clustering, in SAS, there's a procedure called um, PROC fast plus or fast plus, which is for clustering. And this is the method that used for uh, k-means clustering. And the difference from hierarchical clustering and um, k-means clustering is that k-means clustering is more of a um, um, iteration type of clustering that you have to do, whereas hierarchical is that you are looking uh, in terms of different distances in order to calculate it. And um, k-means clustering is a little bit quicker if you want to do a large data set, whereas hierarchical clustering is a little bit slower if you have a large data set. And um, in terms of O operation, k-means is O to the n, whereas um, plus proc cluster, the hierarchical clustering is O to the n squared, which means that the, the larger number of um, cluster, uh, number of observations you would have, fast plus or k-means clustering would be a lot more quicker. 
However, um, some of the um, um, cons of uh, k-means clustering is that you have to specify specific number of clustering that you want to use. Okay, so in this case, I want to have um, three number clustering and I am going to use um, a max iteration of 20 cases. So it's going to iterate which um, observation is going to go into which cluster. And it looks very much similar for other uh, syntax codes. So it has an ID as a country and variable as wine and heart, just much as you had with um, proc cluster where ID was country and variable was wine and heart. Okay. So I'm going to run the k-means clustering by submitting this. So I'm going to hit run here. Okay, so now, yes, um, you get the results here. And k-means clustering, sometimes you get a different result with the um, hierarchical clustering that you perform from proc clust. But however, it seems that in this case, you got identical values. That is, um, the, we have the main clustering as number one the big chunk of the countries that start from Australia, Iceland, all the way down to the United States. The second cluster was that was the country that was on the left top corner, Finland, Ireland, England, and New Zealand. And you had the bottom right corner that was France and Spain, who those people who like to drink a lot of wine. Okay. So one of the um, bad things about uh, um, using a fast cluster or k-means clustering is that you have to specify the number of clustering that you are going to use. So now, maybe, what if you want to have like four clusters or five clusters or even more? So in order to do that, I come up with a macro here. And so I designed a macro and you have the same codes that you probably see here that for um, fast clusts um, that we had for k-means clustering here. However, in terms of k, so this is the iteration that I'm going to go through. So I'm going to go through from three to five cluster. And obviously, you can increase this to seven or eight or how many that you want to have. And I'm going to pass in this variable k into mass cluster here, max number of cluster that I'm going to specify. And if I make this macro and just run this, what it's going to do is that it's going to run the fast clustering for three cluster, four clusters, and five clusters. And if I would submit this, let's see what happens. Okay, so you probably see uh, three different uh, printouts. And this is the one you see for um, max number of cluster as five. You probably notice that these are the clustering that the um, k-means clustering would do. And it does give a, a particular uh, cluster number for each cluster, uh, each country or each observation that you would see. And also for, um, uh, max number of four clusters. Now I would have um, cluster number is going from one to four, and you have each country matching with that cluster number. Okay. So in this example, we kind of went through how you did um, cluster analysis on SAS, and I kind of used different uh, two types of methods hierarchical clustering and k means clustering. And obviously, um, for those people who are a little bit more advanced, um, you could probably think about separate type of methods or options that you can give to. And obviously, for proc cluster, there's a lot more method um, than centroid. We have the average, we have the complete, and so on. Um, maybe in your um, spare time, you can probably um, uh, play around with uh, these different type of methods and try to see whether you get any different type of clustering if you use different type of methods. Okay. So well. Um, Thanks for um, watching this video and um, good luck on your clustering with SAS.